you know, I, I remember, and I'm going to share this, and I've never shared this before, but I remember coming out of the divorce. I came here. I married an American. It didn't work out. It was um, a completely abusive er marriage that ended um, very terribly. You should have married a Canadian, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I never met a good Canadian. Well, yeah, there was a couple, but, you know, none that I wanted to marry. So um, what happened is I was alone in another country. Mm -hmm. I had no career. I was just on a green card, a working visa. I had nowhere to go, nowhere to turn. I was homeless, and I had all these men that were like, Okay. dangling the carrot, dangling okay. the wallet, and all these things, oh, and I yeah. was like spinning in circles going, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I chose to stay homeless in a car for almost a month because mm -hmm. my morals and my values were bigger than, Good you know, that you. dangled carrot. And, God bless you for that. And, but, you know, we're not always in that position to make those right choices, and sometimes we're going to fall, and sometimes we're going to make wrong choices. You know, it's about us standing up for ourselves and loving ourselves enough to say no, and that's not okay. Right. You know, and uh, have you women been in this situation before? Well, not exactly what you're saying, but yeah. definitely put in situations that, you know, I'm either going to get the part or I'm not, based on whether or not I'll sleep with someone. Mm -hmm. And do they say that to you? Like, yes. basically, okay, so... For me, I... Point blank. Okay, can you share, like, a, let's get into a little bit in more details because I want to explain to people and our viewers and listeners, this is real. Oh, this yeah. really has happened. Well, I've had, I'm sure you have too. It's just, it's part of the business. It, it is, unfortunately, part of the culture, which I'm really glad mm -hmm. is changing. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, men in power feeling that they can, well, dangle the carrot, yeah, you get the part, yeah. And, and not all directors and producers and not all people in power do that at all. I work with some really, really terrific uh, producers and directors, mm -hmm. um, Richard Galbay, Fred Olin Ray, um, a lot of people that I really love that are terrific and we're really good friends and they have class, um, yes. whether it's a B-movie or not. Um, but there are some powerful people that I've worked with and parts that I did not get mm -hmm. because I was told directly, I'll tell you a story. It's like, I, I, I tell have, us. Okay, oh, tell, all right, okay, okay, tell, okay. So, no, tell okay, okay, it, it, this now, this is a, yeah, <laughs> this is why we women get nervous to say these things. Yeah. For me right now, I don't care that much about what I'm about to tell same you. Same here, same here. Because one, I'm older, two, um, I'm a mom and I want to, I want, my daughter is going into film school, mm -hmm. she's in film school and she wants to be a producer, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But, but three, I'm a director producer right now and I doubt he's going to hire me, so I'm just going to say it. So, um, this is, God, how long? ago. It wasn't that long, 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 I guess it was, because 10 years ago, I guess it's kind of a long time. Um, but I was, <laughs> not really. Well, it's it's just AFM. around the corner. Okay. So I was at the AFM, the American Film Market, mm -hmm. and I was hanging out with a group of people, Saban Entertainment. Mm -hmm. Familiar with Saban yeah. Entertainment? Okay, so uh, there was a new film that John claude Van Damme was going to do, and um, uh, Mr. Saban himself, Hayden Saban, comes up to me and he says, he says, oh my god, I've seen your movies. I did a lot of action movies, martial arts, and all yeah. this type of stuff. With Don the Dragon Wilson and blah, blah, blah. Awesome. And um, he says to me, he says, you are so perfect. I've seen your films. I'm Saban. He goes, I want you for this film. You're going to be the star opposite oh, Jean-Claude Van Damme. <laughs> and I went, I mean, I he was a little flirty, but he had his wife with her, with him. Mm -hmm. And so I'm thinking, well, you know, they flirt. I don't care. Flirt, flirt, flirt. Doesn't oh, matter. Yeah, that yeah. doesn't really right, bother right. me. Yeah. Let me get that right. out and I'll get right. to that later. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So he says, I want you to come to my big Saban entertainment party. And he can bite me if he denies this. So, <laughs> so, so I go, I go, okay, yeah, great. So he goes, you come in my limousine. And I go, all right. So I go in the limousine, and there's his wife, Cheryl Saban, beautiful blonde woman, and she's sitting there, and she's acting a little icy. And I'm going, why is she being icy? Well, mm. I'm just, oh, is I'm that intuition? Yeah, and I'm like, I don't know what's going on. Okay, and she's like, this, you know, and I'm like, okay, God. So he's kind of half touching me in the limousine. I'm thinking, this is getting awkward. I wonder if they swing. I don't. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's just they, get that out of the way, they right? They can go on the, uh, you know, the swing on the play set over there. I'm not going to do it. So we get in there. And, and uh, actually, it was right after my daughter was born. So, um, it was more like 15 years ago. It's been a while. Mm -hmm. So we're walking in this big, beautiful party. I forget. It was in Santa Monica. I forget what, what hotel. And I, he introduces me to Jean-Claude Van Damme, who I'd met before, blah, 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 blah. And he said, this is who I want to be the lead in your next movie, blah, blah, blah. And he says to me, he takes me aside, he goes, tonight, you come to my room. 
Ah. In my room. <laughs> wow. And I said, You should have no. gone and kicked the shit out of me. Yeah. So I go, <laughs> I go, I go, I go, no. I would have. But I, I, I'm. At the time, I was working on a lot of films. I had done Legally Blonde, or had I done Legally Blonde yet? But I was doing a lot of things, and I was just like, no. <laughs> yeah. And he goes, and he was instantly offended. And he said, of course. he said, what do you mean, no? And I said, <laughs> no. I, Let me break I, it down for you. I, 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 <laughs> no. Physically. Let me break it down. <laughs> and he says, wow. and I go, but you're what? And I, this is a dumb question, but I was actually more astonished. It's like I wanted to go, like, tell me about you. Why would you ask me this? Like with a microphone. No, I said to him, I go, but your wife. And he goes, she lives a very good life with me. I take very good care of my wife. Oh. She, she's going her way. I have a room here. You stay with me. Oh and, and, and I said, no, I, I'm not going to do that. And he says, all the women that are in, this is going to sink in. Wow. May God strike me if I'm lying. He said, all the women that play the leads in my movie, Savant Entertainment, sleep, sleep with, with me. me. Wow. Okay? Sounds like Harvey Weinstein. Like, Lie really detector, bad. please. And so I went, I went, oh, okay. Well, not me. And he was so insulted. And I, that was it. So I did not get the part. True story. My God's right. Oh, I've really got more. Good for you. <laughs> oh, I got hundreds. Yeah. Right? I mean, and, and a lot you. of times you don't want it. I didn't tell anybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't tell my husband. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't. I just, you know, because it happens all the flipping time. Oh, yeah. it sure does. And, you know, now this is kind of embarrassing. Sometimes to be a professional actress in this business, you can kind of dance around this behavior. Okay. It's kind of I a terrible it. shame that you have to, mm -hmm. but it has mm -hmm. been part of the culture oh, yeah. forever. Yeah. That you can do this. You can go, oh, ha, ha, ha. Yeah. Yeah. You're so sweet, uh, darling. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, God, yeah, yeah. if I was married, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. But no, thank you. Yeah. And you can kind of fend it off and go on with your life, and you can get the part, and you can do. And it's a shame. Um, but it is a it is a true honest part of the mm -hmm. industry, and I have to say one last thing, and then I'm, I want to hear everything you have to say. The one thing I want us ladies to remember, two things. Sometimes when we're working on the film, I'm just going to say it. We are attracted to a producer. If oh you yeah. Are attracted to a producer. I was. And once. you want to yeah. and you want to have an affair with them. Yeah. Great. I don't care. It's none of my business. It's consensual. It's, yeah. it's none it's of consensual. Because you're attracted. You get attracted to a director. You yeah. get attracted. Oh, I have the power. That is yeah. natural. Power. Okay. The, the power. only thing is, yeah. us women, if anybody's listening to this part, if somebody offers you the part and you really want it bad, ask. Say to yourself, don't do it. Not just because of you, because of your self-esteem. It create. This is where it gets dangerous because it creates a pattern where yes. men unfortunately think that they can do that you know mm -hmm. yes so that's if that's if he was way. telling me the truth and he really did sleep with every one of the women that were ever in his films mm -hmm. really yeah you know you know what i mean well, harvey weinstein yeah. said that you're right you're right he said yeah, i slept right. with all the women that made it which i seriously doubt i'm sure he yeah. did not every I'm single sure woman he did not but you know i'm sure that <laughs> list was and it's a shame yeah, it's really sad, and and I, you know, I can't help but go to the wife. I, like, I need to backtrack there for a minute. As being as a woman, I mean, I have this conversation with my girlfriend all the time in Canada, Christine. Shout out to you as always. You know, we're just talking about the the wife, like what we put ourselves through, what we allow to go through, because that. Poor wife, I mean, she's making a choice to sit back and allow this to happen, but she's allowing other women to be abused, and she yeah, knows if, it. If and you would assume she does, she sensed she, it. I think they, yeah. like, they like the lifestyle. They love well, the that's lifestyle. Exactly it. Yeah, and they probably don't want to sleep with the swine anyway. So you know. But yeah. here's the thing about here's yeah, the thing. Yeah, I live a comfortable life. I get to go to the Tiffany's. You I get to fly Vittons. all over wherever I want. Have but lunch with my girlfriend. Yeah. You know, well, I'm sure that but she's a, she's a, but she's a super puzzle. smart, intelligent woman, mm -hmm. and she yeah. actually is part of the Saban Entertainment, and she's been very successful and yeah. tremendous. I just, I it, this is wow. part of their life that I don't know or understand. So. Well, maybe I maybe they were swingers. I don't know. It's not I am business, very I proud of you, and I yeah. and thank you Me for too. sharing. Honestly, thank you for sharing. Is anybody that else gonna share anything like that? Or am I the only one? Am I the guinea oh, pig? Oh, I will. No, no, no. I will. Yeah, Laurie, no. Thank you. I <laughs> Honestly, I really mean it. Oh, there's more, but I'm, I could, I would bore you. I'd go on and on and on. And I, and the truth is, is that I'm not really trying to destroy anybody because I care. I mean, no. To be honest, I could care no. less. It was so long ago, and 
actually no harm. No, yeah. I mean, basically, if I I didn't, well, if that's how we got people to do the part, well, then I guess I wasn't going to do it. So, yeah, absolutely. Anyway. No, this is good because we want people to know that you're not alone. And this is happening right now as we speak somewhere, everywhere mm -hmm. in the world. And mm -hmm. so, Lorraine, share with us a little bit, if you don't mind, just so we can oh, have a better We don't have to say names. I just decided oh, I Oh, I'll say a name. I'll say Frank P. Rosenberg. <laughs> he did the re reincarnation of Peter Proud. Mm. Okay, I was just starting out. And I got a call from his office to come and audition for a movie. So mm -hmm. I went and auditioned for the mov movie, so I thought. I brought my portfolio that Harry Langdon, the famous photographer, took all these pictures that were unbelievably mm -hmm. great. Yeah. They didn't look like me. They were just <laughs> great. And I said, I took all my pictures and my little resume, you know, from Roller Boogie and this movie and that movie. And little tiny movies before I did all the marbles, eh? So I go to his office, and there's nobody there. He invites me in. He, I sit down. We start talking. He says, God, you're so sexy. You're so beautiful. You're so incredibly hot. And just, you know, he says, I want to make love to you. And I <sighs> said, what? Excuse me? And we, I, I had put my portfolio on his desk. He's going through my pictures, right, eh? looking at my pictures and looking at me, and he says, you're more beautiful than these pictures, much better looking than these pictures. I said, thank you so much. Don't you, would you like to see my resume? And he says, he looks at the resume, he said, not much of a resume. And he says, but, you know, you're incredible. You're, you're so unbelievably beautiful. This is what he said. <clears throat> and then he says, he locks the door, and he says, he says, sit down. Because I was kind of standing up and I, I, I was nervous. And, he said, and I sat down and I, I didn't feel comfortable. That voice, my inner voice, mm. said, "This something's going to happen here. And he says to me, the only, Lorene, the only way to get ahead is to give head. Oh, this was God. Bank P. Rosenberg. Oh, my Lord. The only way to get ahead is to give head. Are you ready? Oh. And he so sends up this fly. And I jumped up, screamed, I screamed, and I ran out. And I ran out, oh, unlocked the door, and I ran, and I cried all the way to my car. And then I got home, and I thought, you know what? I forgot my fucking portfolio. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that, that too. I spent six hundred dollars so on you went back to as home. a waitress, as a waitress. So this was Friday. So, so Monday morning, I go back uh, to uh, Metro uh, uh, Goldwyn Studios. Eh? So I go back. And I go to the gate, and I said, my name's Lorene Landon, please. I just went back to the gate, and I said, can, can, I please, is, can you tell Frank P. Rosenberg I'm here? And he says, hold on, and he calls. And the gate guy hit on me, too, and I just, wow. yeah, he did. And he says, yeah, Frank said, hurry up. He, yeah, he, he'll see you. He, he, he's going to uh, forego lunch or something. So... I, I parked the car and I went He's up to his office yeah. and I knocked on the door and he, he opens the door and he smiles and you know what he says? What? I see you changed your mind. Oh! And oh I said, Lord. I didn't change my mind, I want my portfolio. And he said, he said, come on in. I said, no, give me my portfolio. He says, I don't have it. I don't know what happened to it. And so <clears throat> I said, I want my portfolio. My pictures cost a lot of money from Harry Lane to give me my pictures now. I'm calling the police. And I'm reporting oh, you God. to the SAG people, right? <laughs> and he said, oh, I'm so scared. He says, you know what? He says, I know everybody in town. Yep, that's what they do. You know, if you say wow. anything to anybody about me, I will tell everybody in town and you will never work again. So I said, I want my portfolio now. And he opens up the drawer, he goes through three or four different drawers, he finally finds my portfolio, and he pulls it out, and I grab my portfolio, and I said, I'm telling on you. <laughs> oh, you're oh, so, you're so cute when I'm watching you, I can see. I know, I, I can said, see I'm you doing on this, you this I can time. see this like, He says, no you aren't, and you know what? You just did. <laughs> he was right. You didn't. I didn't, I told my family, I told my sister, I told my mother, and I told a few friends. Mm. And that's just one story. Another story was I was with a very, very big agency. Huge. One of the two biggest. Okay. And uh, I went out with the agent. The agent uh, 
said he was, his sister was coming in from Palm Springs and his family, and a lot of people were going to be there. We went to an Italian restaurant, right? And he picked me up outside, outside. I said, I'll meet you there. No, I'll pick you up. You know, I'd been with him three years. Nothing, nothing. Two years, maybe, two years. And he picks me up outside, but, you know, when he brought me back to the apartment, dropped me off, he gets out of the car, and I said, no, I can walk myself to the apartment. Mm -hmm. It's okay. And he says, no, 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 I want to make sure you get in. It was a very dangerous part of uh, Beverly Hills. <laughs> it was... <laughs> It was Beverly Hills on oh Cannon. Oh my lord. Gated, Cannon. yeah. <laughs> and anyway, so he walks me to the door, and I opened the door, and I had a dog, Sushi Bear, eh? Sushi Bear, mm. Alaza Opsa, and he pees on his leg, right? <laughs> <laughs> and the agent, Dave, not, says, oh, ah, he's screaming, God damn, fucking dog. And he, and he says, I want to come in. I said, for what? He says, I want to make love to you. And I said, no. And he, and he says, why not? Because he was five foot tall. <laughs> I love the little why not? action there. Because I'm going to stop you. Because, Dave, A, number one, you're my agent, and B, you're not my type. What? What do you mean I'm not your type? I mean, it's crazy. And he left. He, no. I, and so I locked the door, and then I called my very big ag agency at the time huge. I mean, the biggest of the biggest. And he wouldn't take my calls. I wasn't trying to talk to him. I was trying to see why I wasn't getting sent out. This went on after the third week. I called and I talked to his assistant, the gatekeeper, and she said, he's not here, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, Sandy, the casting director, there was a casting director at this agency that was sending me out and I was getting work. And she said, oh, no, he's not here, he's not here, he's not here. And I said, uh, well, I'm not being sent out. She says, I don't know why, Lorene, the casting director. And then, so I start calling other agents, you know. Mm. I got to work. I need to work, you know. I'm at a quarter of a million dollars by now. I just did. Yeah. But I needed to work. I, I, I wanted, I, 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 nobody's calling me or sending me out or anything. So I called a few agents. And then Dave calls me out of the blue and says, I hear you've been calling around other agents. I hear you've been calling other agents. And, and I said, yes, I have been calling other agents because I'm not sending, being sent out. And he says, well, you said I'm not your type, remember? Oh, wow. I'm not your type. And I said, Passive aggressive well, and yes. I, no, what else did I say? He didn't remember. I said, you're, you're my agent. I said, first of all, you're my agent. Mm -hmm. And he said, but I'm not your type, remember? And that was it. That was it. That was the end of wow. it. Wow. That's all I hear. There needs to be That's more, just two stories. more yeah. women in power Hun that, that hundreds, should be agents. And, hundreds and, of stories. And, you know. Hundreds of stories. Absolutely. So, words of wisdom. We've got a couple minutes left. I still want to talk about, I want to know before we go, um, and then we're going to talk about words of wisdom to young women out there, women, and just in general, how we get through situations like this. But tell me how it was working with Reese Withers. Oh, Reese? She's, she's nice. She's, we had yes. fun. It was great. <laughs> I love it. How was, how was that? It was good. Serious. I actually, um, originally, in the first uh, Legally Bond, I had a bigger part. They were... Uh, the part was a little bit more scandalous. The actual original script of Legally Blonde was a lot more like uh, American Pie. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. A little bit more racy. Okay. Um, but then when they finished the film, they realized like, a lot of the more scandalous, funny scenes, because I played her mother, and I was, you know, trying to advise her about men. Yeah. And there was this ridiculous scene where I'm telling her about how to handle your man, and that was cut mm -hmm. out, a couple of things. But I enjoyed it. It was fun. Yeah. And it was a you know, good little bit for my career, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And tell me how it was growing up as your father being Doug McClure. It was great. It was fun. Um, I love he's, I love my dad. I miss him. He was a great guy. Yeah. Really kind person. I, quickly, you had said something about somebody told you to be successful, yes. you had to be ruthless. Yes. And and it was in a book, and I can't remember who wrote it. it was uh, about, and my father was in it. It's terrible they're going to shoot me because I can't remember. Was it Burt Reynolds' book? Anyways, he had said that my father was a really good actor, but he wasn't ruthless. And that's what made it hard for him to get where he wanted to get. I just would love to see us not have to be ruthless, just just be good. Absolutely. And stick by our 
goals and well, I, I know, was never ruthless. No, and yeah. look at no. I don't want to be today. Oh, persistence. Yeah. Persistence as opposed to passion. passion. Persistence equals Absolutely. success. Mm -hmm. um, I don't necessarily agree with being ruthless. I agree no because I agree too. I, you know, yeah. you, now certain people can go with that but that doesn't fit yeah. with us. Tell me yeah. two key things maybe your father left with you you know, some yeah. words of wisdom and tips, and what are some of the things that he left with you that we can share with the rest of the world? Um, well, if you're really talking about acting uh, quickly, he always used to say, just be, just be that part. Don't, you know, overthink it. Okay. Um, you know, and, mm -hmm. and just come from that place of being honest, mm -hmm. and uh, that's helped me a lot. And, and as a yourself. father, and <laughs> as a father, and you know, he was, a, he was a good guy. He actually taught me to fight my own battles. I, I nice. don't know if you have, there was a my mom too. quick incident where yeah. I, yeah. Uh, we were working on something together actually, and I got upset with someone, and that person came up and told on me to my father, mm -hmm. and my father started laughing. and He goes, "I taught my daughter to fight her own battles. So you're gonna have to go back and discuss it with her." Oh, wow. <laughs> that's a great and I thought I, love it. I, I thought I was gonna be in so much trouble because I saw him marching over to talk to my dad. I don't know, just because I really felt I was right. <laughs> that's a good and when I heard that, I was like, ah, ah, ah. Oh, "I love it. This yeah. is all about girl powered, yeah. women powered. Um, you know, and, and we give love to yeah. guys out there too because this isn't what it's. You know, we're not segregated." To just mm. you know, women here in feminism, mm. Um, mm. we want to give the love to you guys too. Oh, yes. But I want to, I want to hear words of wisdom from both Loreen and Tani to the women out there, young girls, whoever. Mm. Just words mm. of wisdom. Well, sexual harassment is persistent because there are no consequences with employers or perpetrators. Mm. You have to, you have to tell somebody, call somebody. Uh, don't and and in the minimum minimum wage. Uh, industry unfortunately is much more pervasive because women and men and mm -hmm. men yeah. are afraid because they've got families to support. Yes. So tell somebody, go online, go to a place called Time's Up. There's a defense fund set up for you. Go to Time's Up online okay. and um, uh, enter, uh, give out your information. And it's probably a scam, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> give out your credit card too. You're like, and hey, don't give out your credit I'm, card. Yeah, I'm Time's up. There's a defense on. <laughs> uh, uh, just, just have self-respect and try and get a book called *The Disowned Self* by Nathaniel Brandon, because human beings repress and suppress, act, we, mm -hmm. as human beings, aspects of our personalities that are incompatible with the standards of society. Yes. So we disown ourselves, mm -hmm. right? Don't disown yourself. Nice. Be real, be honest, be true to yourself. Because when the lights go out at night, a lot of us can't sleep at night. And there's a reason why. Turn that light out, and when you fall asleep, mm -hmm. and you fall asleep because you know you did something good for somebody else, most important, yeah. or you believe, whoever you believe in, I believe in Christ yes. myself, but we all believe in whoever we believe in. And, and be just be good. Be good to yourself. Be good to yourself. Respect yourself. Yeah. Respect yourself because no one else will if you don't. Uh, mm -hmm. Amen to that. Good Thank job. you so much. Lorene Landon, where do we find you on social media and how oh, do you find Oh, I'm on Twitter career? at Lorene Landon on Facebook, um, uh, LoreneLandon.biz, and IMDB. Please go to IMDB and check out all my upcoming movies. I've got four coming out and five shooting. Latest with Harley Wallen. I'm so excited to work with Harley Wall, and he has done so many fabulous movies, and I'm in Agramon's Gate, and he's, I, I don't know if he's in the movie, but he's been a fabulous director and writer, and he's an actor, too, a great actor, so Amazing. I am so looking forward to that, and uh, Robo Woman, and... A bunch of other movies I can't say because I haven't signed the contract. <laughs> I love it. Lori Landon, thank you so much for thank being here. So we appreciate you. Me. It's so great to see you as always. Tanya McClure Arntz, thank you so much for being here. How do we find you um, on social media? Tanya McClure okay. Arntz, T A N E, McClure, M C C L U R E, and Arntz, A R E N D T S. Blame my husband for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We got it. Last thing words of wisdom. Just believe in yourself. <laughs>
Yeah. And you know what? I think this whole movement has done great for all of us women because I think we are feeling empowered. And, and, we men. Should, and, and men. And men because yes. I work with, we again, I work with a too. lot of great um, male directors and, and whatnot. That I, I adore you. Yeah. I just think truth. It's just truth. Find your truth. Yeah. Oh, find your truth. That's mm -hmm. beautiful. I yeah. love it. I love you girls. I don't want this to end, but it has to. Thank you so much for being here. We're here every Wednesday. Did you want to say We're a today? link. We're a link. Yeah. A link in the chain against shame. I yeah. love it. I came up with that today. When We're I hashtagging it. this. Okay, don't forget that. We're going to make a new hashtag. I love that. I this is beautiful. Like Thank you for being here, ladies. Thank you for Thank being you part for of my show us. today. Every Wednesday, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on the TLC Unleashed Network, Hi, the Lisa. Power of Voices. Lisa Thank Fresh. you so much. My and best friend. we'll see you next week. Bye. Where's her takeout music? Lee actually sings and uh, plays the harmonica. How long was that? I don't know. Yeah, like a long. Yeah.